Hello everyone. In this lesson, we are going to answer the question, what is JSX? Let's dive right into the action. So in our previous lesson, we wrote a bit of React code to create this user interface. So our code got the job done, but this react.createElement syntax feels really verbose. And if we're being honest, it feels like too much typing for the results that we're getting. Well, luckily, there's a much easier way to create elements with React. And this is where something called JSX comes into play. Instead of trying to describe what JSX is with words, let's just see it in action. So right now, follow along with me in the same code pen from our previous lesson. Or if you closed your window, you can always just use the finished product link from the previous lesson. Okay, but before we can use JSX, we need to change a setting in CodePen. So do this with me. Within the JavaScript column in CodePen, right to the left of the JS label, we see the settings icon or the gear icon. Go ahead and click on that. And then where we see JavaScript preprocessor, you want to select that and choose Babel. I've actually heard it pronounced both Babel and Babel, but click the one that says Babel. Okay, and then we can close this window and we are ready to begin using JSX. So check this out. Instead of this mess of four different react.create elements and the different arguments and everything, watch how clean this is. We can empty out the entire body of this function, right? So it's just function our app, the body's empty. And we're just going to return a pair of parentheses. And then inside these parentheses, we can drop down you can drop down one more time so there's an empty line like this. And now we are free to begin writing JSX. Now, at first glance, this is going to look like HTML, but it's not. So follow along. Let's create an opening and closing div tag. And then inside that div, we can create a heading level one and say, our amazing app header. After the H1, we can drop down and create a paragraph inside it, say the current time is, and for now we can just say blank. And then below that, we can create a small element and inside it say copyright footer text. Cool, so that creates the exact same result, only this code is about 5,000 times more intuitive than the react.createElement code. To the untrained eye, this just looks like simple HTML. Whereas in reality, this is something called JSX. In other words, it looks like HTML, but it's really JavaScript because JSX is a syntax extension to JavaScript. Behind the scenes, this code is going to get converted into a bunch of different react.createElement calls. But you and I don't need to worry about that. We can just write this intuitive code. So this looks like HTML, but it's not. So let me walk you through a few of the key differences. First of all, yes, we can still only have one top level element, right? So that's why I have this wrapper div, but check this out. On this opening div, we can actually get rid of the letters div. So it's just an opening tag and a closing tag. And this is what's referred to as a React fragment. So this way React won't actually output an unnecessary wrapper div into your markup. But technically for the sake of React, we still just have that one top level element. Okay, another difference that I wanna point out right away would be if we wanted to add a class to one of these elements. For example, what if we wanted our header to be orange? So open up your CSS panel in CodePen and imagine we have a class named special and we say color should be orange, right? And then we want to apply this class of special to the heading level one. Well, in regular actual HTML, you would just say class equals, but class is a reserved or special word in JavaScript. And this is actually just JavaScript. So instead we would say class name, and that's an uppercase N equals special. Cool, so now our header is orange. Next, let's work on replacing the word blank with the actual time value again. So here that is in our code. Now in our previous lesson, we were within a traditional JavaScript string of text. 
or I should say, instead of quotes, we used back ticks to create a template literal, and then we could include something dynamic with dollar sign curly brackets. Well, this time around, we're not in regular JavaScript. We are within JSX. And in JSX, when you want to include a bit of actual regular JavaScript, you just need to include curly brackets. So we can get rid of the word blank and just curly bracket pair. And inside here, we can include JavaScript. So we can just say create a new instance of a date object, parentheses to call it, and then say dot to locale string, parentheses to call that. Perfect. We can see that our time is once again updating every second. And now if you select this entire line of code, it appears as if it's not even re-rendering. However, if you select just part of the time portion, you can see that your selection is lost and it is indeed being re-rendered. But if you select the header, you can see that the entire view is not being re-rendered. This is perfect. So all of the same features of React that we are so impressed with are still here. It's just that now we can use a more intuitive syntax. Okay, and also, since our code pen is now set up to use Babel, so we can use JSX, we can also scroll down to the bottom of our JavaScript. And down here, when we are actually rendering our component, we can simplify this as well. Because JSX is in the picture, we can now delete this react.create element, parentheses, our app. And instead, we can just include something that looks like an opening HTML tag, or I should say a self-closing HTML tag, right? So the JSX way of doing this is just less than symbol. And the name of our function or component is our app, and then a forward slash and a greater than symbol, right? So that looks sort of like an HTML tag, but this is the JSX way of rendering a component with this name. Now there's more to JSX than just what we've covered in this lesson, but this is more than enough to get us rolling. We will learn more about JSX as and when necessary. For now, let's change gears and talk about what we're going to cover in our next lesson. So right now, our entire interface is defined right here. And that's fine because each one of our three sections, right, the header, our content, and the footer, each section is only one line of code. However, in the real world, your header might be made up of a hundred or even a thousand lines of code. And then your content might be a thousand lines of code, your footer could be a few hundred lines of code. So from the perspective of staying organized, we'd want to be able to separate our code or sections into different pieces instead of just one giant blob of text. Now don't worry, our entire interface will still ultimately be assembled or described here but by learning how to break our code into separate components and then have one component leverage another component, we are going to take our organization skills to another level. I'm so excited to jump into this with you and show you what I'm talking about. So let's keep things rolling and I will see you in the next lesson. To get immediate and lifetime access to the full 15 hour video course, you can find a heavily discounted coupon link in the description for this video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.